I have heard people say you are God. Don't use such words for yourself. I'm a God. No, you're not a God. You're a new creation. You and God are one. You are the righteousness of God. So the word God is used by the Holy Spirit to refer to idols. So the Holy Spirit is saying to you that when you see the word God in the Old Testament, the interpretation of the word God in the Old Testament, one of its interpretation is that when you see and God said to me, it could be an idol said to me. That everywhere you see God doesn't mean God. God, 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 God. All the one, two, three, four, five G-O-D's, whether in capital or small letter, may all be idols. And the Lord spoke to me. Lords are many. So that you saw Lord doesn't mean Jesus as Lord. In studying, you must follow the rule of pretext, post-text, and context. Judges in the court of law we are called gods in the Old Testament. So when you see God said to me, question which one? It could be a judge. It could be a deity. A deity. And it could be God Almighty. Okay, So that's why you don't just take a word and have a, a universal interpretation. It is context that interprets the use of words. Jesus Zozo. I give you a mouth and a wisdom that your enemies cannot resist nor gain sin. Yeah! Glory to God! Latoa! Meanola! I have heard people say you are gods. You are gods. But they don't know what it means. A lot of Christians go around and say, I'm a god. I'm a god. But they don't know what it means. When you find out that God used in the epistles is for very miserable things. The word God in the epistles, when Jesus used that word, he was quoting from the law. He said, is it not written in your law? The law is not a revelation of God. The law of Moses is not a revelation of God. Is, is it not written in your laws you, that you are God's? Now look at the word in the epistles. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 4. As concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols. We know that an idol is nothing in the world. And that there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods. Whether in heaven or in earth. As there be gods many and lords many sons gods lords we're doing word study sons lords gods don't use such words for yourself i'm a god no you're not a god you're a new creation you and god are one you are the righteousness of god so the word gods is used by the holy spirit to refer to idols g-o-d-s refers to idols now what we read is in the epistles those are the words of the holy spirit so the holy spirit is saying to you that when you see the word god in the old testament the interpretation of the word god in the old testament one of his interpretation is that when you see and god said to me it could be an idol said to me that everywhere you see god doesn't mean god 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 all the one two three four five g-o-d's whether in capital or small letter may all be idols and the lord spoke to me lords are many so that you saw lord doesn't mean jesus as lord so when jesus said you are gods he was quoting not from a fresh statement where was he quoting from psalm 82 verse 1 mm -mm. psalm 82 let me start from verse 6 psalm 82 verse number 6 i have said ye gods the eye is not there i have said ye gods and all of you children of the most high but how many of you observe that when jesus quoted it in john 34 10 34 he omitted children of the most high he only used ye gods 
He omitted children of the Most High. He only stayed with ye gods. Is it not written in your law? I have said ye are gods. So what do we mean by gods in the Old Testament? You need to really understand what he is saying. Now notice the word, like I said, ah, it's not, it's not in the original, it's in italics. When he said you gods, he is talking about something that exists already. He was not prophesying you will be gods. Ye gods mean they were already in existence. Ye gods. The word theos. T-H-E-O-S. Theos. Gods. Interestingly, is the same word used for God Almighty. The word used for idols is the same word used for God Almighty. Theos. Now, I know that in your Bible, you have big letter used for God. Capital G and small letter used for God small g okay then you also have s small s for other spirits capital s for holy spirit it's not the holy spirit that inspired those things those capital s small s it didn't come from the holy spirit it's translators that use their discretion to put those kind of things now so don't let them confuse you because listen to this you will only know who he is talking about by reading it in context it is context that will tell you which god it is context that will tell you which lord it is context that will tell you which spirit so forget the small letters and all that you gods again in studying you must follow the rule of pretext post text and context god standeth in the congregation of the mighty he judgeth among the gods so now he will tell us who these gods are next verse how long will you judge unjustly and accept the presence of the wicked seller next verse defend the poor and fatherless do justice to the afflicted and needy next verse deliver the poor and needy read them out of the hand of the wicked next verse they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness all the foundations of the earth are out of course next verse i have said ye gods and all of you are children of the most high next verse but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes so who are the gods in this scripture he's talking about judges 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 in the court of law we are called gods in the old testament so when you see god said to me question which one which one it could be a judge it could be a deity a deity and it could be god almighty Okay? so that's why you don't just take a word and have a, a universal interpretation it is context that interprets the use of words if i'm teaching good say i hear you now so the the gods here ye god is actually for idols idols judges those who judge matters remember when satan spoke to eve he said you shall be like gods he wasn't saying you shall be like God Almighty. He was saying you shall be like judges. You shall be like judges to know and to judge. So the word God is used in the old covenant to also mean someone who judges matters. So he uses God for judges and for human beings. The word God is used for human beings. Yes, human beings. I said it. Some of you are looking at me. Exodus 7 1. Exodus 7 1. Exodus 7 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. Who is a God to Pharaoh? Moses. Who is Moses? A man. So God is used for men. I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. And God means a judge. Exodus 4 16. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God. You will play the part of God in his life. This is Moses to Aaron. Exodus 21, verse 6. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or unto the doorpost. And his master shall bore his ear through with an awl. And he shall serve him forever. Judges there is God's.
Exodus 22, 8 and 9. If the thief be not found, then shall the master of the house, then shall the master of the house shall be brought unto the judges to see whether he have put his hand on, onto his neighbor's goods. Next verse. For all manner of trespass, whether it be for ox, for ass, for sheep, for raiment, or for any matter, manner of lost thing, which another challenger to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whom the judges shall condemn, he shall pay double unto his neighbor, whom the judges shall condemn. Verse 28, this is clearer now in verse 28 of 22. Thou shalt not revile the gods, nor curse or curse the ruler of thy people. The gods are the ruler of the people. The gods are the ruler of the people. So when he said ye gods, he's talking about the ruler of the people. He's not talking about big god and little gods. No. He said you shall fall like one of the princes or one of the rulers. When you don't judge well, God will judge you. Now Jesus never quoted the, that statement including the children of the Most High. He said if he called them gods, in other words rulers those who can stand in authority like a power of attorney to act on behalf of god which means that scripture is not talking to the man in christ watch jesus lips always watch jesus lips watch what he didn't say and watch what he didn't repeat you know when jesus was quoting isaiah's prophecy he got to a point he stopped he didn't quote everything Isaiah said. Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 3. Pay attention. Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 3. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach the God good tidings unto the big. Pay attention. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted because I'm going to ask you questions. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Next verse. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Next verse. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, with garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Let's see where Jesus was quoting from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Next verse. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Next verse. And He closed the book. Why did He close the book? He has finished saying what is important. What did He not say? Vengeance. Why didn't He quote vengeance? because vengeance is not his ministry he omitted vengeance because vengeance is not jesus's ministry so if you have a bottle of vengeance in your house you have imported a ministry that is not jesus's ministry the moment he say acceptable year he closed the book why second corinthians chapter 6 verse 2 for he saith i have heard thee in a time accepted and in the day of salvation have i succored thee behold now is the accepted time behold now is the day of salvation you cannot have vengeance in the day of salvation vengeance will only come when the long suffering of god is over today we have no ministry of vengeance anywhere anywhere vengeance will only come when the day of salvation is over because when the day of salvation is over all those who rejected the gospel will have to face the outcome of their choice so jesus didn't quote everything there are things he omitted are we teaching here so you must watch out again what jesus didn't say you must know the language used when people were called sons in the old testament know why they were called sons when they were called gods in the old testament know why they were called gods so you use the language if you are going to use gods in the Old Testament, when you come to the New Testament, you call them the rulers of the people. Don't use the words of the Old Testament. Use the interpretation by the Spirit. Sons of God in the Old Testament are angels. But if you want to use that word in the New Testament, you call them ministering spirits. Ministering spirits. Always know the language that interprets the other. Don't think sons of God in the Old Testament are sons of God in the new covenant no 
understand the use of language language of the new testament is revelation where the terms fit properly 